Hi, in this episode of Gray Lightning, we're going to talk about how to design and laser cut accurate rulers for your favorite tabletop game. Hi, welcome to another making episode of Gray Lightning, my video blog about making things and playing games. And in this episode, I want to talk about using Adobe Illustrator to design and a laser cutter to manufacture accurate rulers for tabletop games. So I have War Hordes examples here, but of course Warhammer would be very similar to these. I have Star Wars X-Wing, and these are very specialized rulers. But I also have a consolidated version of the Star Wars rulers that puts four rulers in one, so I'll talk about how to design that. And I'll also talk about some of your manufacturing options, from rear engraving of acrylic, as in these examples, to engraving and painting, as in this example. So I'll talk about all that in this episode. The easiest rulers to do are the ones like Warhords that are based on real-world measurements. So to make this area of effect ruler, you just use the ellipse tool, and you put in the dimensions of the circles, 3 inch by 3 inch, 4 inch by 4 inch, 5 inch by 5 inch, and then you align them using the alignment tools into concentric circles. I drew a line horizontally through to help me line up the, the numbers here that show the different inch sizes. And then I used the rotation tool to rotate that line to do the placement of the deviation compass. Those arrows and numbers are placed at 60 degree locations on the circle. So I would just keep rotating the line and use that for placement. My prior videos talk about how to do the an image like the one in the center and how to do text and numbers and create outlines that are suitable for the laser cutter. To do the spray ruler, I just use the pen tool to draw the shape and then the grid is really your friend on, on rulers like this because if you rotate the ruler so it's flat on the line in the grid, you can just then put the little hash marks at each of the inch marks. And once you've got those on one side, you can group them together by selecting them all and, and putting them in a group, copy and paste them, and then rotate it and move it into position on the angled side. The much trickier rulers to do are ones like Star Wars X-Wings, where the measurements are actually arbitrary. The best solution here is to lay out your actual game rulers, put a ruler in the picture, take a photo, then place that photo into the drawing, and I put a one-inch red line in as a reference, and I just kept transforming the size of the image until I knew it was to scale. After that, it's really just a drawing exercise. Uh, for the straight rulers, you can use the rectangle tool. You might have to rotate it a little bit because the, your picture isn't exactly um, at 90 degree angles, but just go ahead and do that and make the straight rulers. The curved rulers are a little bit harder. I use the curvature tool. And you just click on one end of the curve you want to draw, click somewhere in the middle, then click the other end and it does a pretty good job of matching that curve. Then I right click and go pick the selection tool and click off of it to make sure that I end that segment. Then I have to do the same thing for the inside curve on this ruler. And once I have two curves that I'm happy with, I turn off the reference photo because I think that makes it easier to do the end lines. And I take the straight line tool, and the trick here is to make sure that you're picking up the anchor points at the end of each of these curves, and you draw the end segments. And then to make sure that you really have a closed shape, I always go and select all four parts of this ruler, and I right click and I join them. And that makes sure if there were any gaps between those lines, they're closed. Once you have the basic shape, you have to add the arrows and the numbers and the image, and then I always do a reverse set for rear engraving. Let's talk about the consolidated rulers. What I did here is I would take copies of the four rulers I wanted to put together, and I would just uh, flip them and maneuver them into position, and then I would select them all. And using the Pathfinder, I would do a union, which is this box here, Unite, and it does an outline around the four, and you get the shapes you see here. 
You can watch my other videos about laser cutting. Basically, you just take the Adobe drawing and you print it. You send it like it's a printer to the laser cutter. You tell it the materials you want. You tell it the thickness of the material, and it does the rest. So here it is uh, cutting and engraving the first version of my Star Wars rulers. Now, unfortunately, I had tried to shortcut this process and use a photo off the internet as my reference photo, and here's where I learned that the reference photo wasn't accurate. And that's why I say the best approach is to take your own photo and then you know it's right. One hint here is that for every display, there's a zoom level that actually makes the image match real life. So if you find that for your display, you can hold up the real Star Wars rulers and see that you're heading in the right direction. So here are the revised rulers and they fit as they should. I wanted to try painting the design on some of them. So to do that, you leave the paper on the front. You always leave it on the back and you engrave the design right through. And here I am painting the rulers with acrylic paint. It takes me 10 minutes to paint this set of rulers. It takes perhaps even more time to peel the paper off because everywhere you've engraved, you've cut away little bits of paper. And so you have to peel each of those little pieces off. The bottom line for me on painting is that it takes a lot of extra time and I'm not really happy with the quality of the results the paint would not flow completely into the uh, engraved lines and you would see little gaps. I had done an experimental set on transparent rose-colored acrylic and it didn't really work for rear engraving, but I just painted some white paint into the top and for me this worked better than the black on the solid green. But the real solution for me is my favorite here. This is fluorescent green acrylic rear engraving. It shows up great and it's easy. This is my preferred method by far. I find that the rulers can be hard to pick up off the table so I cut these little handles in quarter inch acrylic. I used my fusing liquid that I showed in my last video and I would just run a little line of it along one of those half circles and a minute later I had a little handle fused on a ruler. So that's how to make accurate rulers for tabletop games. I have lots of other videos about making for playing, so if you're interested, please subscribe.